uh, if you have more than one. So what a customer will do, customer will for, um, forward the public IP, I mean a port forwarding, configure the port forwarding for those servers like web server or mail servers. So in this scenario also don't need to configure the BGP, uh, only default out need to uh, forward all the traffic towards the ISP. That means um, we have a one connectivity with the ISP. ISP will give some IP address for us. We can uh, set the IP address on our servers. Also, we can use the port forwarding for those servers. So in this scenario, we don't need actually the BGP. So, because uh, we can uh, just need the default route towards the ISP and all the customers, all the users under the customer side uh, can uh, get access to the internet. Also, if you want to uh, uh, like the web service with a public IP, then it also can be done by a foot forwarding, right? So, in this scenario, we don't need uh, the BGP also here, right? So, what happened if we move on our next slide? Uh, if you see in here, we have earlier, uh, we had only one connectivity with the ISPs. But in this scenario, we uh, if you see, we have two connectivity, right? So these two connect, if you have these two connectivity with the uh, ISP side, cause earlier connection um, has, a, or does, if the connection was dropped, then we don't have any redundancy, right? So for the redundancy purpose, we will, uh, using two connectivity with our ISP routers. If a customer connected to the two links, then what will happen? In this scenario, we can what we can do? We can uh, do advertise the default route to the um, uh, ISPs. Uh, actually, we can configure the IGP with them. Uh, say this is one our uh, router one, and this is our router two. Then what our router one can do, router one uh, can do other advertise the default route with the lowest metric and R2 can uh, use the default route, I mean advertise the default route with the highest metric, then all the traffic uh, forwarding from R1 and R2 to toward the ISP first link, right? And this is the second link. So, all about just need the default route, right? We need just a default route. So in here also, we don't need the BGP like, cause uh, we just need to forward the default route towards the ISPs, then ISP is can handle other things, right? So what happened if you, con if you configure the uh, same metric, I mean, uh, for the default routes, then we can, uh, what we uh, what actually happen if we consider the same uh, metric on the IGP for the default node, it will actually send the 50-50 traffic. I mean, 50% uh, traffic to the link one and 50% uh, uh, traffic to the uh, second link. So what if, if you wanna uh, like uh, a load balance like 80% or 70%, a percent of the traffic towards the first link and uh, 20 or 30 percent of traffic to the second link. Is it possible here? So in this scenario, uh, uh, is, uh, that is not possible here, right? Because we cannot configure, uh, I mean, the manipulation traffic through the IGP, right? So at that time, if you want to uh, uh, like uh, change the traffic pattern or if you wanna like uh, manipulate the traffic size like 80% or 70% then we have to move another routing protocol that is called BGP. Another thing like uh, say uh, uh, if we don't need the traffic manipulation we just need to forward all the traffic uh, through the first link and uh, if this link is got down then all the other traffic will forward via these links. In that scenario, we don't need the PGP, right? We can use the IGP for uh, uh, for the uh, uh, generating the default node for uh, link one and also for the second 
and dealing with the uh, highest metric like so in that scenario if the isp is connected uh, if the customer connected to the one isp also same here if the uh, server need uh, to live to internet or need uh, the service uh, with ser uh, service and the main service active so we can use the port forwarding or also we can uh, set the public api address that is uh, got from the isp uh, isp one right so in that scenario we don't need a uh, customer uh, i mean the bgp here right so what happen actually if we have multiple isp configure over there like this one see uh, in here we have a customer right and a isp is, customer is connected into isp isp1 and isp2 right for the redundancy purpose right to if uh, say isp1 goes or down then all the traffic towards the internet for the customer will down so to ensure uh, or uh, we don't uh, 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 like the fault tolerance right then we have to connect it uh, to isp right so that's why if customer connected to the uh, to isp like uh, isp1 and isp2 then what we'll do if we configure only the default route like uh, for the isp1 with the primary link and the default route to the secondary link if uh, isp1 down then other traffic will goes to the isp2 if we choose that one if uh, also if uh, isp1 is goes down all the traffic will goes to isp1 we can do that right if we don't need uh if we just need the internet so that can be possible if customer need only the internet access nothing much more what happened if customer uh, need or the web service uh and also the mail service active for the customer land side because in here if you see uh we use you know, like isp1 ip in the servers their servers like uh, isp1 ip is here and also isp1 ip is here see if isp1 goes down what actually happen if those ips will be live or not yes well, if isp1 uh, it goes down all the ip that's coming from the isp1 also be down right so we can't access those ip uh, uh, either where uh, isp1 went down right so how actually will uh, mitigate those problem? So for that reason, we have need our own IPs, right? If uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, it's thing happen for both the ISPs, if we use like uh, say, uh, if it's one, like uh, I am using ISP1 IPs here, ISP2 IP here, right? But if ISP2 also go down ISP1, then uh, this IP will be down, right? This I uh, also down. So either way, like uh, if we use the ISP's IP, if ISP goes down, our service will be down. So to mitigate this issue, we need our own IP, right? So we need our own IPs. Then where actually we get our own IPs? So instead of using the public IP address from the ISP, we will get our own public IP address. The IP address space is maintaining by IANA. IANA. That means Internet Assign Numbers Authority. IANA. IANA assign the IP address space to other large uh, regional inter, uh, internet registry that is called REACH. That means IANA. Or are distributed or, or in, uh, distributed all the IPs to the regional industries in our uh, Asia Pacific region. We have ethnic. That means if we need any IP for our organization, then we have to contact to the ethnic. Then ethnic will give us the IP as per our requirement. Uh, if they uh, if we fulfill their requirement, then they will give us the public IP space. Then we have, uh, uh, let's say we uh, found one uh, 
public IP address from the admin, then what we'll do? We will do like uh, this is our uh, pub, new public IP address slash 24. Then what we'll do? We'll advertise our IP access towards the ISP, then ISP will uh, announce those IP address to the internet. Right. If ISP uh, and, uh, got down, then uh, will it still live through the ISP too, right? If ISP tool got down, then our ISP IP is live through the ISP or then problem is solved. But how actually will I advertise those IP address to the ISPs and also the uh, internet? And then we need the BGP. So, uh, um, in this scenario, actually, we need the BGP. Without BGP, we can't do that, right? So BGP is actually the uh, uh, number. Oh, okay. All another thing we just need to mention, right? How actually BGP will work here, right? So in this scenario, we need the autonomous system number, right? So uh, in uh, customer side, if we uh, like, uh, who actually give us the uh, IPs, as I said, as in our side is ethnic, right? Uh, sir, can you please uh, open the mic for Mr. Abdullah Hart? Just Hello. previous one, I think he uh, one uh, he asked for ex explanation again. Previous, uh, uh, yes. Uh, which... I think uh, next next slide. Just one. Yes, this the uh, this one or this one. This one, this one. Oh, as I said, oh, okay. As I said, why uh, why we need a uh, BGP? Like uh, we we got our IP address from the ethnic, right? Like uh, we ha we have uh, ten dot uh, sorry hundred dot hundred dot zero dot zero slash twenty four IP address from ethnic, right? Then we have to announce those IP address to the internet, right? So how actually we can do that? To announce this IP address, we will use the BGP. I mean the border gate routing protocol. Yeah, right. So how actually BGP will work? Uh, uh, we uh, will discuss this later, but for the timing, you just need to remember uh, a BGP is nothing. So it's the uh, uh, so configure the AS number. So where actually we'll configure the AS number? Uh, we can get the public ethnic, uh, AS number from the ethnic host, right? We'll discuss the uh, number in uh, our next slide, just to remember, if we got the S number like uh, six five, okay six four double zero one from the ethnic, then if we announce through this S number to the uh, ISP one and ISP two, actually this is our own S number, and under this S number, all our prefixes will be there. So uh, this is actually the, our identity, and this will be our prefixes. So in the uh, in this scenario, uh, senior Hoyen, we will configure. Um, we will need to announce our public IP address to the ISPs or internet. We need BGP. If we uh, need multiple uh, ISPs, uh, I mean, uh, if you need to, uh, for the redundancy purpose or fault tolerance purpose, so we have to connect it to more than one ISP. Then we need to configure the BGP. So that's the main thing. Then, uh, as I said, what is uh, AS, AS means the autonomous system number. What that means? Uh, actually, it's a collection of uh, network under a single administrative distance. Like uh, same, uh, if we have. Uh, Uh, like if you have more than uh, 100 IP block, like 100.100.1.0 slash 24, 
100 dot 100 dot 2 dot 0 slash 24 like 100 dot 200 dot 3 dot 0 slash 24 uh, like we have more than uh, 100 blocks or one it can be one or two blocks right so how actually um, identify those ip address it will be under a one as number that means autonomous system number so as uh, it's uh, in uh, if we check the uh, uh, there is two version for the as number like uh, Okay, now in a, a earlier version, there is a 16 bit range of uh, ASN number. So it um, it was covered 65,536, I think, or 35 or 36. Okay, uh, I guess that was a 16 bit range and uh, it standard uh, as a 32 bit AS number. So where we'll get more than 4.2 billion uh, ASN number. So also there is a public and private AS number. Public and private AS number here. Also uh, in here, there is some public and private AS number. So um, uh, as I said, the internet is nothing, just more advanced autonomous system number. That means where uh, we'll in internet we are getting only the S number like S1, S3, 5, 2, 4, like this way. Under this number, all the prefix, as I said, if uh, uh, this IP uh, addresses belongs to the S number one, we'll found all those um, uh, IP addresses under this S number. So it's uh, an organization requiring connectivity to the internet must obtain the S number, let's say. So this is all about uh, the S number. Uh, hope you guys understand. What is BGP session, right? As uh, if we are like, uh, if we, uh, now, as I said, if we need to configure the BGP with our eyes, it's like, uh, this is our customer router and this is ISP's router. Then we have to configure the BGP as I said. So when uh, the BGP uh, will configure that uh, the, uh, the session will be established, right? This, uh, that's actually called the BGP session. Right? Mal uh, when uh, like uh, we have a more than we, we can configure the BGP uh, more than half a AOA like uh, not other uh, routing protocol repo is there. So in uh, IGP, as we know, uh, it's uh, just uh, need to be connected or uh, directly, right? That means we have to connect it uh, or directly with each other. I mean, the neighbor router. We cannot, um, uh, they cannot uh, find the neighbor uh, that is uh, a halfway or even more than that. But we can configure the BGP uh, that is not connected to so the other but it's connected to the other router we can configure the bgp with this order also right so to configure or i mean to reaching uh, this router we have and uh, to configure the underlay routing protocol i mean the it can be a static is um it can be uh, igp any of the igp that means uh, it will ensure the connectivity with this uh, router to end uh, this router. Then we can configure the BGP uh, session of uh, this two router. By default, uh, I mean, uh, if we categorize the BGP session, uh, there will be a um, you know, two session. One is the e BGP, another one is the IBGP. So what is IBGP? When we will configure the BGP with the two different autonomous system number, like uh, uh, if uh, this is an ASN1 and this is the ASN2. If we configure the BGP with ASN1 and ASN2, then it will be the uh, eBGP. I mean the external 
PGP. When we'll um, when configure the BGP with same AS number, like uh, we have a two router, like router one is the AS number one and router two also AS number one. Then if we configure the BGP with this way, then it's called the IBGP. That means the internal BGP. So uh, in BGP session, that the administrative di uh, distance of the BGP is 20 and for the IBGP, the administrative distance is 200. We'll discuss a, a, a more about the IBGP and EGP in our later slide. So just for the, uh, now, just uh, you have to remember we have a two BGP session. Uh, one is the IBGP, another one is the EBGP. As I said, uh, EBGP is configured with the two different AS number and IBGP with the same AS number. Hope guys, you make sense. And if we think the BGP advertisement, or uh, as I said earlier, if we have a customer who won't have the one uh, like the uh, uh, address space like 10.0.0.8. Like 10.0.0.10 and, uh, and what customer will do. In downside, if we uh, uh, think in the downside, like customer side, what customer will do? Customer will announce these uh, addresses space towards the ISP1 and also the ISP2, right? That's the simple no, things. Right? Uh, 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 sorry, you have to mute, I think. Yeah. Sir. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, what customer uh, in downside customer will do? Customer just uh, only need to advertise their uh, address space towards the ISP1 and also the ISP2. ISP will advertise uh, this uh, address space towards the internet and from the ISP2. If customer uh, ISP1 goes down, then um, uh, these addresses will still live through the ISP2. Okay, so it's plain and simple for the customer side. What actually ISP um, one or two will do in ISP side? They are uh, there are three things customer can got from the ISP side. So ISP one, uh, I mean, if you think the ISP one, they uh, can only advertise the default routes toward the customer. And also, ISP2 can uh, send or advertise the default loads towards the customers. That is the one thing. That means if you need, uh, you have, if you need to go anywhere of the internet, you just send me the, all the request. I mean, all the traffic towards the ISP1 or ISP2. So that means we don't need to uh, uh, need to know where uh, we will have to go and how we can go over there, right? Because we just uh, have the default loads. If we need to manipulate or something, we don't. Uh, we can do that, right? And also, ISP one can do. They can uh, give uh, some partial route over there. So um, why uh, we need this partial route in here? So I will discuss it more in our uh, next slide, so that it will be make sense for, for you guys. And uh, what uh, ISP? Uh, that uh, the part what is the partial route actually a partial route means the isp one can send uh, some of the uh, prefixes the uh, that means he can uh, include his, his prefixes including the default route that means default is one route and also you will include all the uh, routes that belongs to him uh, for his customer or his that means 20.0 if we consider here isp one he will Advertise the default and for his route 20.0.0.8. That means two routes are advertising to the customers. So that's called actually a partial route, not hold the internet. Some of the routes he can send to the customer. And also in ISP2 side, he also uh, can do the same things. And also what ISP can do, ISP can do all the uh, routes uh, if we. Um, 
think uh, in um, uh, if we take the current uh, bgb table it uh, more than 10 lakh more than 10 lakh right so if a customer router capable to carry all the route then we can send all the uh, route to the customer and also we can uh, isp2 can send all the route to the customer um, i mean the customer that means if uh, isp1 have the best for for one traffic a customer or can choose the isp1 but if uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, say this is 1.1.1.0/24 and this is 2.2.2.0/24 if uh, isp1 have the base for for the one network then customer can uh, send all the traffic for the one network towards the isp1 and for the two network if isp2s have the base for for, uh, for the two network then customer can forward the traffic for the uh, towards the isp2 that's the main and thing when we have the full route of the internet right so in here if we summarize uh, all the things what we can um, find here we can find here like uh, in downside customer can uh, send uh, only the default route uh, i mean only his uh, prefixes towards the isp1 and the isp2 and if you check the upside our isp side isp can send uh, one is default okay in here one is default another one is partial and default another one is full um, internet routing table So uh, just uh, think about the default route. If customer can send the default route, like uh, say, if customer one send as the default route and customer two also send as the default route, then what will happen? As I said, uh, we can choose any of them, right? Like uh, we can choose ISP one or ISP two link. So uh, we can, like we can pay for, uh, if we pay for the ISP1, then all the traffic towards ISP1. And also if uh, the link goes down, then uh, other uh, traffic, um, all the traffic goes by, um, will go via ISP2. So what actually will happen if we just need to go the ISP2 route, from the customer side yes like uh, see in here in customer side customer is uh, from the as to um, i mean the for the isp1 there is a 20 network 20.0.0/24 and 10.0 is the custom um, uh, customer router and also isp2 has a one uh, prefixes or network that is 30.0.0/24 if customer on chose like uh, if customer one chose the first path to the internet is the main path to the ISP one, that means all the traffic, all the traffic of the uh, customer side will go by the ISP one. Then what will happen for this 30 network in customer side? Yes. So for this 30 network, customer have to go to ISP one and also internet to the isp2 although the customer isp uh isp2 is connected to the customer right so this is not the optimal path so what for the for that means if uh if we uh, like uh although we are connected to the isp1 and isp2 we are not uh, we cannot go uh, for the uh, ISP1 or ISP2 networks if we have chosen one, only one path, right? So what actually we can mitigate in this scenario? How I can actually mitigate in this scenario? So what ISP1 and ISP2 can do, ISP1, he can send default route and the uh, include is 
routes and also default route and also his routes. That means if uh, like uh, we can send all the default routes to the ISP one, but if we customer have the like uh, the 13 networks in his routing table and he can choose the path to uh, reach the 13 network and then he will can send all the uh, traffic for the 13 network to the ISP two. Although we have chosen uh, the default routes for the ISP one. That is customer can make the decision for the ISP two. So, so in the, uh, this scenario, you have uh, uh, to choose the uh, partial route or uh, um, ISP need to send a partial route. So also, yeah, as I said, ISP can send all the full, uh, I mean, the full internet traffic that belongs to the ISP one routes, also the ISP two routes. Make sense, guys? So in this way, you can uh, send the default partial and the full uh, route to our the customers, and also that we can send uh, our prefixes towards the ISPs. As I said, we are already explained this in a right. What uh, uh, path vector? As I said, we have a, a like uh, if we have a four autonomous system number, we are running BGP, exchanging routing information. Like, uh, let me open the pen again. Just uh, like if we have uh, S1, like S2, S3, and S4, right? If we have four autonomous system number and running with the BGP, right? And exchanging routing information uh, with just like uh, if we have a uh, 1.1.0/24 network in AS1 advertising towards uh, AS2 and AS2 also address to and um, AS2 all advertise to AS4. Then what actually will look in, uh, what actually will find in uh, AS4 in routing table. If we ch uh, check the BGP table of the AS4, then what we'll get, we'll get the like 1.1.1.0 slash 24 is the network then we'll have the next top address i mean okay just write down here next top address and what actually we'll get here like we'll get here uh first one is the originator the originator is number is one then if we uh connected by s1 to s2 then after that we'll have the s2 and after that it connected three and after that uh, we are in as4 right so in this scenario wh what we are getting here first we are getting uh, the i i means the originator who is originating this network that is the s number one and after that is uh, s1 is connected to the uh, to the i speed uh, i mean the s uh, number two after that uh, we'll have uh, the s2 is connected to the s3 so it uh, uh, it uh, if we have more than uh, path, but we are getting a uh, best path for this. Uh, I mean uh, the for this network, right? So in uh, this way, the path are uh, our daughter system. We have get through the order to get the uh, destination, right? So in, in this scenario, this called actually the path vector. Vector means um, where we actually go and uh, path, as I said, where I uh, have to go, right? So uh, in BGP table, it stores all the prefixes like this way and the next stop and the path vector, included the path vector. So in uh, this scenario, like uh, if we check, Like a S1 is connected to the S2, S4 is connected to the uh, S4, 5, 
so in in this way internet is work right one is is connected to more than one or two like the five is connected to uh four s number and s one is connected to uh two s number right so bg bgp allow us to use routing policy at this um at uh, the auto system level in the um in this uh, uh scenario if you have uh, Check uh, more than uh, I mean the uh, um, nine AS number is here, and also in AS number nine contain uh, one network like one ninety two or six eight nine dot zero slash twenty four. If you look at to the AS number one for this network, we will have the full path. I mean the best path for to reaching this destination. So oh, uh, just uh, you have to uh, when uh, there. Uh, in AS number one vegetable is always uh, have the base path, choose the base path, or what actually will do AS number R one for reaching uh, the one eighty two one six eight nine dot zero slash twenty four or AS number nine. So it always can uh, choose the exit path. Means uh, if uh, AS number wants to reach these networks, they have only two path, right? Only is AS number two and AS number four. But uh, is this AS number uh, can uh, I mean the manipulating uh, the route path for this network? If uh, if like uh, if wanna change the path for uh, reaching this network like two to five or two to three, but AS number one can't do that or BG can't can do that. So in this way, you just need to remember. Uh, uh, AS or BGP can only manipulate the exit uh, exit path. Like uh, in AS one, uh, if we have the two um, AS uh, two AS number connected, like two and four, then we can only manipulate these two path. And uh, in two can give us the more path. Like uh, uh, he can manipulate for his two path, right? And five can manipulate his four path to reaching there. Like if, if five, uh, like if we uh, coming like S one to S two and S two to S five, but S five have uh, I mean uh, three path to reaching the uh, nine network or um, S number nine. So he can manipulate from um, uh, uh, I mean his exit path if uh, he if he needs to send uh, the all the traffics for the night or via S four and S seven S and he can do that. He also can choose the best path for this network via this one or via this one, because he has three path. He can maneuver this. Uh, his uh, exit path for this network. But in S one, he can uh, uh, manipulate this traffic like this way, like S one, S two, S three, S four, S six, and S nine. Right? Just he can send that all the traffic from S one to S two or S one to S four. So each autonomous system will only advertise the base path to your autonomous system number. S1 will only learn about the base path from S2 to uh, 2 and for S4. Unless there is a base path fails, then only learn from the second base path. Like uh, uh, S2 uh, have uh, two base path, he will only send the base path but like if it is three, then you'll send only the S3 path to the S1 for this network. If uh, this path fails, he uh, if uh, then he uh, can only change the base path for the nine. I mean, he can choose the uh, S5 to reaching the nine to a, um, from S1. We'll send this way. So in this, uh, all the things can happen. Manipulation can happen. Via attributes. So, uh, BGP has uh, uh, four. At um, I mean, uh, more. Um, I mean, uh, lots to, um, lots of uh, attributes. We'll discuss later. But uh, what I just need to remember here? You have to remember here, like uh, if we configure. The BGP for manipulation, the traffic or network uh, for the exit path, we have to choose the BGP attributes.
as I said, BGP uses the path attributes for each network path, and uh, path attributes uh, provides the BGP regularity and control of the routing policy in BGP. So BGP prefixes path attributes classified into four uh, sections like uh, oil, mandatory, um, oil and mandatory, oil discretionary, and optional transitive and non-transitive. What does mean? BGP always send the uh, updates with the path attributes like uh, uh, if we uh, check the BGP uh, updates table then we'll find uh, some mandatory uh, mandatory attributes with the BGP updates like a, a, a path attribute a path attributes so it's uh, the mandatory field and also have uh, some uh, Oil non discretionary that may or may not be included with the BGP advertisement. Others uh, routes that uh, stays with the BGP advertisement from AS to AS and optional non transitive, uh, transitive cannot be shared with the AS to AS. So, just you have to remember here one most important things like uh, if we send the BGP updates packet uh, from one neighbor to another, then uh, what it's called. NLRI, that is network uh, or reachability information. So network layer, uh, uh, what it actually contain here, right? It cons, uh, con, uh, contains the network prefixes, prefix length, and uh, any BGP attributes that is specific for this route. So if you uh, check the uh, update packet of the BGP table, then we'll power uh, the NLRI. Uh, that is network layer reachability information, which contain the network prefixes, prefix length, and the BP, BGP is. It's most important thing. If we don't have any, uh, uh, if we uh, don't have found any uh, prefixes uh, in the NLRI, that means there is something uh, misconfiguration uh, in the remote side, or uh, or it can be in uh, your side. So. And NLRI is most important if we check the prefix mismatches or the prefix not coming uh, into you know, as um, expected, then you have to check the configuration. DGP uses a uh, uh, path vector routing protocol. Uh, so does that contain complete topology for of the table like uh, other linguistic routing protocol not it's a distance vector routing protocol like uh, for ensuring the loop free path in bgp is the uh, it has some mandatory attributes with the bgp packet like a path as i said earlier so it's called the oil non-mandatory attributes so it's complete list of the SN and prefixes has traverses from one source to another. So how, how actually BGP can uh, prevent the loop? Like uh, if uh, say uh, if BGP found uh, like he's originating one dot one dot one dot zero slash twenty four prefixes from here, and is uh, it's uh, network advertised to his ISP two and it's also ISP to advertising is to ISP and also to ISP. If he found anything that is coming from his AS number, then he'll discard it. That he will not get any uh, thing that is belongs to his AS number. So in this way, he's actually uh, preventing the loop. That's just for this. So, um, as I said, a path is for the loop prevention mechanism. In B, uh, by default, it's called the oil non-mandatory attributes. Uh, as I said, if BGP router uh, receives a prefix advertisement with it is listed in a path, it discards that pre uh, prefixes. So, in this way, BGP uh, prevent the loop.
as a busy uh, bgp address family uh, if we are uh, let's check the bgp uh, by default bgp intended for only for the ipv4 prefixes but uh, in rhc 25 uh, 2858 it uh, added multi protocol bgp uh, capability uh, for that reason of uh, the address family identifier uh, uh, came up. So uh, that is if uh, uh, earlier, if we check uh, before RFC 2858, BGP only can carry the IP prefixes. But now um, after the 2858, BGP also uh, added uh, one AFI. Now, I mean, now uh, added the AFI with the BGP. There's that can carry multiple um, uh, address family like IPv4, IPv6, and also some uh, can carry some uh, subsequent address families like uh, unicast, multicast, and other things, right? So, uh, to ensure uh, this, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, to ensure uh, the multi uh, protocol BGP or uh, separation the bgp prefixes like uh, which one is for the ipv4 which one is for the ipv6 which one for uh, which one is the unicast which one is the um, multicast it uses uh, some bgp path attributes like anti bgp path attributes like the mp rich nlri and also mp on rich nlri as i said nlri network layer which will be information it carries the prefix length prefixes like Right, said so, and uh, for the NPPGP, uh, uh, for NPPGP, it uses the MP underscore rich and uh, underscore NLRI attributes, and also it uses the MP on rich NLRI. So it's uh, included in, in BGP uh, update message when we have con configured the multi protocol BGP. And also, it's contain the subse uh, subsequent uh, address family like uh, unicast and multicast, as I said. So, what I uh, just need to remember here, um, I just need to remember in our, uh, before 2858, we have only one uh, BGP that can carry IPv4 fixes after uh, updating uh, the RFC in 2858. It, it uses uh, another address family identifier or FI. Uh, that can carry the IPv4, IPv6, and others uh, subsequent uh, address family identifier. And most important things is uh, included. Uh, I mean, uh, um, um, it's included in the uh, BGP messages uh, that is MP rich uh, NLRI and also MP rich NLRI for sending uh, the prefix length and the uh, prefixes to the uh, to his neighbors. Makes sense, guys. So, uh, inter router uh, communication. So, when we are establishing BGP with two different case number, then it's uh, called eBGP or inter uh, router communication, right? So, when, uh, like, uh, if you need to uh, uh, have actually uh, and uh, BGP can configured with the others uh, are I mean uh, one router that's not directly connected or that is the hot AOA from a of his routers. So it uses uh, uh, for neighbor agency is like uh, others uh, routing protocol IGP. It's not uses the hello packets. It uses the TCP one seven nine. Uh, protocol to uh, uh, establish the adjacency uh, with the, his neighbors that means uh, if uh, any of the router uh, say like the r1 to uh, if r1 need to reachable um adjacency with the r2 he just said uh, uh, need to open the tcp port 179 so uh, it's not um, uh, bgp not using Hello packet for neighbor adjacency. So uh, and also one thing to, um, and I have I need to remember that uh, if I near need to establish neighborship with the router that has 
to be reachable from the router. That means if the uh, if you want to configure the BGP session with R4 to R1, then we have to have to have uh, the reachability with R1 to R4. That means we have to configure the IGP or a static route, whatever it is, then uh, the uh, router must be reachable from R1. So that's the main thing for the neighbor agency with the BGPs. So in BG, if you check the BGP state like other uh, routing protocol, uh, uh, it uh, has a six state in BGP states. Uh, uh, first one is idle or uh, like uh, idle when all the BGP session uh, repeats all the connection. That means BGP is not configured yet. So as I said, BGP uses the TCP 1794. Uh, so uh, in both way the, the peer routers although although is uh, router has to be open the tcp connection 179 ports if those router uh list uh, i mean the router uh, if uh, one router is configured uh, the bgp has to just open uh, the tcp 179 and he's listening with uh, this port and uh, for neighbor agency with his neighbors when we just con um, when we configure the bgp and opening the tcp session and also listening all the tcp connection from the neighbors uh, we just uh, started the connect uh, retry time that means it just started uh, counting the connect uh, retry time so by default it's 120 second it's a can uh, can or be changed in bgp so uh, say so in after that when it's uh, just started uh, listening the tcp connection so uh, then it can be successful it can be unsuccessful when uh, the tcp connection is successful then uh, it sends the open message i will discuss the open message uh, how it contains later but uh, in here you just uh, uh, need to remember the when it's successful it sends the open message to his peers and say uh change the state of the open uh, send to clear of uh, the connect retry time that called the cr and if the tcp is unsuccessful then the connect retry time or is reset and tcp goes or to the active state not the idle state it goes to the bgp active state that is another state Let's just we'll just wait for two minutes to complete the agenda.
So, uh, uh, friend, uh, the BGP session, uh, the TCB session unsuccessful, then uh, BGP state going uh, into the active state, as I say. And uh, in uh, this state, uh, the BGP is tried to initiate another TCB uh, session with, the, uh, with his peers. And if the session is successful, then uh, uh, it's a um, connector retry is clear and send open message uh, as like earlier state when it was successful and also change the state to open send. If a TCP session also unsuccessful here, then it's, uh, the connect timer is reset and BGB goes into the idle state directly. That means uh, if we uh, uh, first it uh, open one the uh, TCP session, uh, if it uh, unsuccessful, then uh, BGP goes another uh, state that is active state and we uh, initiate another TCP session. That means uh, in a, if this one also goes uh, well, and unsuccessful, I mean, then it goes in earlier uh, in, in the first state. That means it will open another TCP session uh, with the first state. When, uh, uh, open uh, wait for the open message uh, from its peers uh, if it is successful and wait for the open message from its peer. Verify all the uh, fields once it's received, like uh, content BGB version is number or uh, uh, need to be matched with the peers. Hold down timer, BGP identifier. Uh, if he got all the things and it, if it is all successful, then the BGP uh, it's a start the thief. A lifetime. Uh, I mean, start the sending the uh, key for lifetime and uh, also set the hold and key for lifetimers. If it is uh, also unsuccessful here, then it will uh, again reset the connect with retry timer here and BGP will also go to the idle state. If uh, the in here the all the things is aren't successful and the uh, um, I mean the KPLI received from the um, peers and also is sending the KPLI to the peers, then BGP goes to establish session. I mean a state. If it's went wrong or uh, it's not or successful, then uh, again connect retry timer is reset and BGP goes into uh, idle state. And when uh, BGP establish state uh, receive or exchanging updates, notification or key bailout messages from with uh, I mean from his peers also exchanging with his peers then he'll actually send his BGP routing table. That means each um, uh, when BGP goes into the um, established state, then he, uh, only he can uh, send on the routing um, uh, to his drivers. Each update or, or keep a live received result in whole timer reset default if I, I, I is 60 second and hold time is 180 second, what is uh, the if I is the one third of the hold timer? If uh, the uh, like it's a default, if you want to check, uh, like uh, if you uh, change the if I like time like 30, then it will be hold timer is 90, 90 second. So uh, this is uh, BGP is working with this six state. Uh, it's uh, one is related to another one. So uh, for the troubleshooting, when we will need to troubleshooting uh, the BGP uh, sessions. We have to know where actually happen where uh, we need to dig down on the configuration. As I said, uh, BGP sent some uh, messages like uh, open update notification and if uh, messages and which one for what. Like open used for send, uh, set up and establish B uh, BGP adjacency with his neighbors and also contain the whole time BGP identifier is number and origin routing route 
on the things with the open messages. The key palette message uh, is sending, um, I mean, uh, the message or exchange of ever one third of the whatever, as I said, upon the BGP routers. But I already said the default um, in Cisco device default the hold down timer is 160 and the key palette message is Oh, sorry, uh, the hold uh, time of 160 and the, the default keep alive interval is 60. If you wanna uh, like uh, um, set, um, I mean, uh, don't uh, send, uh, if you wanna uh, need to send the keep alive message from one our neighbors, then we have to just uh, set the hold down timer is zero. When we set the hold down timer is zero, then BGP will not send the keep alive message to his neighbors and what update message is contains the update message is contains the nlri that is network security information which includes the prefixes um and the uh, network prefixes right and if we uh, join some prefixes from the bgp table it also included in um uh, with john lri hours uh in uh sending through the BGP update messages. So uh, in uh, if we uh, um, uh, if we just uh, recap our uh, open messages uh, that included hold down timer, AS number, and identifier that need for the adjacency. When uh, all the things uh, goes oil, then uh, BGP will uh, send his uh, prefixes through the NLR. And when uh, like uh, there is happen uh, with the neighbors or neighbors uh, need to uh, reset the connection or neighbor adjacency, then BGP sends a notification message. The, this cause the BGP connection is closed or uh, we need to change or reset the BGP, we, something like that. So these four uh, messages, uh, it uh, uses by the BGP for sending information to his peers and also uh, or he's getting the information from his peers via these four uh, messages. And if we look into the BGP connectivity scenario, uh, like uh, if uh, in us, uh, like uh, when are we talking about the ISPs, BGP, connect, uh, BGP and connections? Uh, sometimes we may hear like terminology single home, dual home, single multi home, dual multi home. Like, so these are the design pattern, uh, um, uh, like uh, how actually the customer uh, connected to one or more ISPs. Like, Single home uh, means uh, the uh, in here you if you see the single home that is single home means the single uh, ISP. That means uh, the enterprise or uh, enterprise or the customer side connected only with the one ISP. Just in, uh, since there is only I am one exit path. From the customer side, you just need to one uh, static route or default route point to the ISPs. In this scenario, no, we don't need to, to configure the uh, BGP here. Right? So as I said earlier, so uh, in this scenario, when customer or uh, customer side or the enterprise is connected by a single link with the uh, one ISP that is called the single home topology. Dual home has, uh, um, uh, it can be many scenario for the dual homes. That means uh, uh, um, enterprise or customer can connect it by a tooling to the one ISPs, not, not the two ISPs. Dual home means two connectivity with the ISP. It can be uh, like a customer, uh, it's, it is a customer router and it's ISP router. It can be a dual link with two routers. That means uh, two or the connection dropping uh, one single router in ISP side or single router in the customer side. 
and also it can uh, configure uh, two connectivity in ISP side in two router and um, ISP is side two router but uh, in customer side in one router it can happen with this dual home scenario and also for the dual home in ISP uh, customers can use multiple router here and and ISP can also drop the multiple link to multiple routers here. But the thing is uh, here, uh, the customer is connected it with the only one ISP, but link uh, for the fault tolerance uh, for the redundancy it uh, using only, uh, I, uh, using only the multiple link. So uh, in, this way is called uh, so when you configure this way uh, i mean the when you configure or, or connected with this way then it's called the dual home single multi home um, a single multi home that means when uh, the enterprise is connected or customer is connected with the two uh, uh, ISPs like uh, in one link that means uh, in from the customer side is uh, connected to one link to the uh, ISP one and also uh, no, to the ISP two that means two ISPs connected that uh, that is called single multi home so it may uh, connected to to ice uh, customer router like uh, if this is uh, r1 and this is r2 it can be connected r1 is connected to the isp1 and i uh, uh, r2 can be connected to the isp2 scenario may be are different but uh, the thing is it's connected to the, the two isp with the one single link that is called single multi hub When customer or enterprise is connected, uh, the ISP is via two links. That means that caused a dual multi home. So it can be same way. It can be uh, like uh, uh, enterprise router drop their connectivity in one router. Also, it can drop in a uh, multiple router. But the thing is, it's connected to the two ISP, also connected via two links. So in this scenario, it's called the dual multi home And, but the thing is uh, in earlier scenario, if we check here, like uh, if ISP's one goes down or the yeah, customer side one or router is goes down, then the, all the uh, traffic towards ISP will go down, right? So, it can happen either way, right? Like uh, it can uh, 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 it can be down uh, R2, it can be down ISP2, right? So other, uh, in uh, if we uh, check the traffic pattern, then uh, we don't, uh, we cannot send, if it's down, then we cannot send the traffic to the ISP2 if it is up, right? So in to avoiding such scenario, then, we are configuring in the customer side and on the uh, enterprise dual multi home in this scenario. Like a uh, customer router connected uh, to the ISP in two router, but the link is dropping into from one ISP to two routers and also ISP one to uh, two to two routers. That is also, uh, also called the, sorry. So if we uh, see uh, like
in here if you all see the isp1 is connected by two links in, uh, with the enterprise and it's uh, a uh, connection drop into router of the enterprise site and also uh, from the isp side is connected by a two link one is connect uh, drop in uh, r1 and another one is drop in r2 so it's also called dual multi home so uh, this way actually uh, the topology can be configured and also we can configure our um, uh, configure our connectivity or adjacency with our ISPs. So if we summarize the whole thing, see a uh, single home, in, uh, if you configure the thing, you are connected to the single ISP using single link. If we uh, uh, configure or if we uh, con uh, connected to the ISP with the dual links, then it's called dual home. If you are connected to the two ISP using single link, then it is called single multi home. If you connected to the two ISP using two links, then it's called dual multi home. So in this four scenario, you can configure or you can design your infrastructure when you will configure the BGP. So uh, first, uh, I say the uh, eBGPS stands for the external gator routing protocol. Uh, but when we need to configure the BGP in between our two AS number, then we have to configure the eBGP, right? So, uh, like, uh, what is mandatory field here? We have the mandatory field AS number in both sides. We have to ensure the reachability in between two routers. Then we can configure the eBGP. So the major or things we have to know uh, in EBGP, the S number is different. When we will configure the IBGP, then S number will be the same. Let's configure uh, the EBGP, then we'll move on to the, our next topic. Let's see how we can configure the EBGP and uh, see the BGP will help. Oh, sir, can you hear me? Yes. How long we can uh, continue our session today? Uh, actually, you're uh, 5 p.m. Uh, so when you start your lab, uh, your theoretical finish? Uh, uh, yes, uh, no, I just starting the lab. Right okay, now. okay. I will uh, not do it, no problem. Okay, thank you, sir. So if we on, uh, just uh, need to configure the EBGP between R1 and R2, just we have to configure and uh, make sure the reachability with this and uh, have to uh, have the different S number for the EB, uh, EBGP. Like uh, this one is S1 and this one is the S2. And uh, we are in a uh, configure the same network here just for understanding the BGP, nothing much more. Okay. And this is connected by a Ethernet 2.0 and 2.0. Okay, let's configure the router one first. Okay, uh, so if you configure our, the router one, what we have to need to configure, uh, like configure terminal, interface Ethernet 2 by 0, IP address is 
sub that marks to 55 to 55.0 and no shift. And I will configure the BGP later, but uh, in here I just configuring the loopback interface for announcing the network into the BGP. So interface loopback zero, IP address one dot dot one dot one dot one slash twenty four. If we check the interfaces, show IP interface brief. See the interface to zero is came up, and also we have assigned the IP address 1.1.1 into our looping interface. We'll configure the BGP later. Just we are configuring the simple BGP configuration with the IP address. Interface two by zero, IP address same on actual six eight one two dot two, and subject was to fifty five to fifty five fifty five dot zero, and the no shirt for of the interface, and also interface loopback zero, we're just assigning IP address two dot two dot two and subject was with the Plus 24, no shirt. So if we check the reachability with the interface IP, like show IP interface creep command for check the interface status, the interface is came up and also the loop already up. And if we ping our peer IP address 1.168.12.1, if it is reachable, then you can configure all the IBGP, right? So here we can ping the neighbor IP or the neighbor router, then we can configure the BGP. Okay, first configure the R1. So as I said, the S number is here S1 and this is for S2. For configuring the BGP, the command the router BGP is the command and the S number. The local S number is one, so I have defining S number one here. And the neighbor, we have, as I said, uh, the uh, neighborship is not happening uh, dynamically. You have to configure the neighbor show the neighbor command. So neighbor is the command and the neighbor IP address is 192.6.8.1.2. Before configuring that, I just enabling the, capturing the packet here so that we can understand what actually happened behind this. Oops. We just filtering the BGP and TCP session here. So nothing coming right now. Okay, so neighbor uh, 192.6.8.1.2.2 is the neighbor IP address and
the remote S is two. And okay, we just uh, we are not going um, configuring the. Uh, I mean, no, we are not advertising our one network to our neighbors. We just configuring the neighborship. And if we check the word shit, take it here. If it uh, okay, if we check the TCP, like uh, earlier, we, uh, we didn't get any information for the TCP. Like, so if we check the one eighty one six, they just configured the TCP session. His uh, source port is G one eight four two, but is sending one seven nine. As I said, one seven nine for PGP. Like, so if we just check internet protocol, and if you check. The TTL here is one. I'll explain why it's important here in EBGP. Just uh, you have to remember when we will configure the EBGP by default, the TTL value is one. So you just need to remember source IP is 192.168.1.2. As I configured the destination IP and the neighbor IP, that is 192.168.1.2.2. And with the source port, destination port, and nothing is coming up right so when tcb session will be established then other packet will be sent or other packet will uh, come here right so uh, we, we just configure in one side that's why tcb uh, session is not successful and we are not getting other bgb messages here we're just getting the tcp messages only here. So if we go back to our router two and configure the BGP, router BGP two and neighbor 192.168.1.2.1 is our neighbor address and the remote AS is, is one. So uh, I am in R2. In R2, the AS number is two. That's why I, uh, I am configuring with the router BGP is two is the local and the neighbor remote uh, ASN is one and then enter. So when you will uh, we just configure the neighbor. After that, we will found the message. The BGP adjacency is up. So if we now check the station here, like uh, TCP uh, or BGP, and we will found some more information here. Like uh, earlier we checked the TCP. Now, not getting here. So, We are just getting uh, the same source IP and destination IP here, and nothing much more, right? If we check here, right? See the when the TCP um, session is established, we will send the open message as I said earlier. Uh, when we send the open message, what will it contain? If you check the open messages, what will it actually contain? It will actually actually contain the AS number. Local OS is one and version is four, right? And also some default parameters and the identifier is 1.1.1. I'll explain the identifier later. Uh, so what we are getting here, we are getting uh, the uh, some information from the open messages uh, like uh, BGP version, AS number, hold, uh, um, hold timer, identifier, right? And if it Check the keep alive message. Like where we'll found the length and the timer is here. And also update message. We check you will get the other setting portion also here.
when BC, uh, BGP session is uh, established, then uh, continuous equal addresses uh, will uh, send or each other, right? That's the common things. So now, if we check the BGP table in here, uh, an R1, but uh, first, if we check the neighborship show, IP, BGP, neighbor is the command to check the neighbor table. Sorry. So here we So here I uh, will get the uh, details information of the uh, her neighbor like the uh, BGP neighbor is 182.168.2.2 the um, neighbor around Randy Paris 2.2 key file message uh, hold down type or key file message and also other things. So if you check down this summary. So uh, if we just check the summary, the, uh, the neighbor IP address is 181.2 uh, and table version is one and S number is remote S number is two and version is four and we are not getting any prefixes and it came up or uh, came up four minutes back. So if we check on the other side, I mean on router two, it will be the same show IP BGP summary. Is summary is the command to check the neighbor summary. So here also same. You are getting only one neighbor that is one two dot one and the version is four and it came up four minutes back and there is no uh, prefixes received yet. So we just configured here. Um, uh, to think uh, just we have configured the BGP session. We are not uh, advertising anything here. So if you want to uh, like uh, uh, advertise our one network, then what, uh, how actually we can do that. So then we have to go again in the BGP configuration router BGP one and the comma this network and which network network one dot one dot one zero and the mask is 255 255 255.0 in vice versa if you want to advertise the two network then we have to configure 2.2.2.0 and the mask is 255 255 255.0 so if we now check the summary information again like show ip bgp summary here we are getting another uh, information included here, like one prefixes found from this one. And also if we check here from R1, show IP BGP summary, here you are also getting one prefixes. Which prefixes we are getting here right now? So to checking this show, IP BGP is the command C. Here uh, we are getting, uh, I am in R1, R, so one is his network. That's why next stop address is zero. And we are getting 2.2.0 .2 from our neighbor that is 182.168.2.2. .2. If we check the path, as I said, the path that if both, uh, the originator for originator uses the I, we'll, dis, uh, uh, we'll see how actually uh, the BGP, uh, route can be read then this is the originator prefixes where the two is originated and if you take the r2 side also show ip bgp we are getting 
1.1.0 slash 24, the origin at of prefix is one and next address is 1.2. So this is the simple way we can configure the EBGP. But most interesting thing here, if you wanna like uh, configure uh, one thing like, okay. So if you configure, Okay, before configuring this scenario, I just tell you um, uh, when we are configuring or advertising the uh, um, advertising the network, then how actually BGP uh, packets look like. So let's keep a live message. If you see here in update TV, there is one field uh, included with the other uh, update messages that is in LRI, what I already said, that is network layer retrieval information. And if we check then NLRI, it's included 1.1.0-24. I am checking from R1, that is the source ID 1.2.1 and destination is true. That means I am on R1. So what R1 uh, is saying that uh, his network information or uh, his uh, network is 1.1.0/24 to his uh, uh, sending this message to his neighbor that is 1.2. And if we check the R2 message also, if we check the R2, he's also sending uh, or advertising his network to the R1 that is 1.2.1. And NLRI, if you check this network that is 2.2.0/24 is the network prefix lay, uh, length is 24 and the prefix is. 2.2.2.0. So earlier, if we check the update message earlier, one like uh, sorry, open message or update message, right? So in here, you don't see the NLR information because we just getting the BGP update me uh, messages, but we didn't uh, uh, advertise anything to our peers. That's why. Uh, the BGP and LRI information is not sending to his or getting from his pair. Makes sense, guys. So this is most important thing when we'll get the NLRI field or when we'll not get that field. If we, uh, if we uh, like, uh, you you are going to troubleshooting uh, BGP set uh, neighbor shared JSON C and uh, when you see there is more NLRI packet, then you must uh, uh, have to go the router and ch uh, check out the uh, network statement and configuration over there. So uh, this is another uh, like the uh, I'll just stop you. Like, uh, see, this is R3, R4, and R5. Like, uh, if you wanna configure uh, EBGP with the R3 to R5, is it possible to configure the EBGP with that? Let's see what I, uh, okay. Sir, how much time in my hands so that I can plan where I have to go? So I think you can uh, finish uh, 510. Uh, 510, okay. Okay, then I can, uh, I just need to discuss here. I. Uh, so there is no time for lab here. Okay. So, so how, uh, actually, if you complete, you want to complete, how much time you need? Uh, no, I have to configure the IBGP after that. But uh, there is IBGP uh, another uh, uh, lab need to configure to understanding uh, uh, other uh, scenario. So I just explaining uh, that part. So okay. I am not going to configure this one. So I will configure the IBGP after that. Okay. So. 
if we all check uh, this scenario, like uh, uh, R3 and R4, like uh, R3 needs to configure the EG, uh, EBGP with the R5, is it possible here? As we know, uh, and we need to configure the uh, EBGP with uh, uh, with his neighbors there uh, and need to be connected directly. It's a main things. So uh, why actually we, um, we cannot configure the EBGP that is uh, a hub AOA from our router. That means if the router is uh, like uh, this is one hub, right? And it's uh, one hub AOF of R5, then we cannot configure by, by default, you know, we cannot configure the EBGP. Cause as I say, to remember the TTL value, right? By default, uh, in EB, when we configure the EBGP, the TTL value is one. When R3 is getting, uh, uh, R3 is configuring the EBGP, the default TTL value is equal to one. When it uh, reaching the R4, the TTL value is zero. That means when we are uh, reaching the R5, there is uh, 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 there is uh, uh, we are getting uh, there is uh, we are not sending any BG packet towards the R5 because it's discard the packet because the TTL value is TTL value is zero because uh, R R4 is discarding the BGP packets. So if we change the uh, like uh, if we need to configure the EBGP with the R5, then we have to change the TTL value in R3. That means we have to configure the EBGP multi-hop, EBGP multi-hop command. So this is one scenario we uh, when we are configuring EBGP that is uh, uh, a hub AOA from our router, then we have to increase the TTL value. Also, we can do that by uh, like uh, if we disable or uh, check that the, um, the connectivity like uh, disable connected check in the commands with the neighbor. The command is disable connected check. Check is the command with the neighbor, then it will not check the uh, direct connectivity with the R4. But uh, when uh, we will uh, disable uh, the uh, connectivity check, then he will check the TTL value first. So, first thing you will check the uh, uh, direct connectivity if uh, it is the directly or uh, not directly connectivity, and we uh, will disable that uh, connectivity check, then he will check the TTL value. If it is uh, zero, then it will discard the packet. If we also configure the EBG multi-hub uh, for increasing the TTL value, what will happen? It'll, it will also it will uh, adjust the with the R5 to R3. But is it uh, a sensible when we are uh, configuring EBGP uh, with uh, that is one up AOA? No, because if there uh, there uh, in between EBG there is no BGP configuration in R4. So we cannot uh, like uh, uh, ex uh, we cannot have the uh, next top information in R4. Like if uh, R3 is sending 3.3.3.0/24 to R5 and he's getting 3.3.3.0/24 here, and he will send the IP information to the R5, right? But when he's sending R4, R4 for um, uh, we are not configured the BG, uh, BGP with the R4, right? So he he don't know how actually we can go over there, right? So in this scenario, if we uh, like uh, if we configure the BGP multi for disable uh, connected check all the things all, all though, but we I cannot uh, you know, sending traffic from R3 to R4. But in which scenario we just uh, we have to configure the EBGP multi hub? Like uh, say, uh, you have, a, uh, as I said, we are connected to ISP, but we are connected to this is AS1 and this is AS2. But there is a two link, R1, R2. If you configure the EBGP with the uh, uh, with our um, uh, connected 
interface, what will happen? It will only forward the traffic with one, right? We cannot load balance with other link. Then what will we can do? We can configure uh, the BGP with our, our loopback interface with our ISP or any of the loopback interface. And ISP will do same things. We'll configure uh, the BGP with loopback interface. I mean, the eBGP will configure with the loopback interface. In that scenario, there is a, uh, if we configure the loopback interface, it's also take uh, the eBGP mark uh, TTL value. Finally, uh, he's uh, checking it's not um, connected, then he'll uh, change the TTL value to zero, right? So, in that uh, this scenario, we have to configure the eBGP multi hub. eBGP multi hub 2. Let's check this scenario in our slide. That will be So, as I uh, said, uh, this is the eBGP configuration. If we Check our EVG models say this is our scenario when we are configuring R1 and R2 uh, with EVG configuration. Then we have to configure the EVG multi hop command like this way. Neighbor address, and uh, then we have to define the update source. I, I will discuss this later, but uh, you just check here. We are configuring uh, on R2 with the neighbor is 2.2.2 with the uh, is the loopback uh, IP address of R2 and configuring the AVG multi hop 2 is this is the TTL value. We're just increasing the TTL value in R1 and also in R2. And we are configuring R2. That means when we're configuring, uh, uh, we are connected to, to our ISP via tooling, then we are configuring the AVG multi hop configuration. So, for IBGP, uh, IBGP, as I said, when we are configuring uh, the IBG, most important thing I just explaining here. So before go, uh, going to our left, so what uh, we'll do, like uh, say ISP one needs to ISP one. This uh, oh, sorry, this R one. Uh, Abdul Rahman raised hand. Sir, can you please open the mic, please? Sir, are you there? Uh, uh, Abdurrahman Rashid, I will uh, receive, um, take your question after the session. Please. Hold. Okay. So uh, in IBGP, in IBGP, uh, as I said, uh, when we are configuring the BGP, with the same as that it's called the IBG or, or internal BGP, right? So like uh, in here, if you see uh, why I uh, actually we need the IBGP. So yeah, we, uh, when we need the IBGP as we have the IGP in our network. If we have the IGP, then uh, why we need the IBGP also in our network? Because uh, we just need to configure the EBGP with our ISPs or other or routers, but we don't own need to anything over there, right? But what happen if we are a transit a transit like the ISP, uh, R1 um, or AS1 is uh, one of our customer, AS3 is one of our customer, they want to communicate via us, then we must have to send their network to our uh, network, right? Like uh, if uh, S1 has 1.1.1.0 slash 24 network and uh, R5 needs to communicate or access this network via our network, then we have to configure the IBGP. Cause uh, uh, in IGP, you know, we cannot uh, carrying more than uh, 2000, like uh, if I say 2000 are out through the IGP. Then we have to, if we, uh, if uh, the uh, prefix is, is less than like one or two, we can do that. But if it is more than 2000 or uh, if we ch check the internet routing table, it's more than 10, then we can uh, 
pass all that p pixels through igp right then uh, so that we have to configure the ibgp over there right so for configuring ibgp we will configure the ibgp with the r 2 to r3 r3 2 to r4 and r2 to r4 i'll explain all, all those things later but uh, in here you just need to remember what our target we just uh, our target is to access the uh, uh, s1 network like uh, if it is uh, s1 and they are announcing one network 1.1.1.0 24 and from r5 we have to access this network so before going to that part i just need to configure the topology here so okay this is the topology as here so r1 r2 r3 and r4 So in here, what actually we need to configure though, we need to EBGP between uh, S1 and S2 because these are two different autonomous systems. This allow us to advertise a prefix on R1 to BGP so that S2 can learn it, right? And also, we also need to EBGP between S2 to uh, S3 and uh, then uh, R5 or AS3 can uh, learn the prefixes through the BGP. Also, we uh, need to get the prefix that R2 learn from R1 to R5 um, uh, somehow. Then uh, we need to configure the IBGP in between R2 to R4. That's the main things, right? Like uh, this one is the IBGP. This one is the EPGP and R2 to R4. This is IBGP. So, when we, um, uh, we are um, like uh, we are configuring these kind of scenarios. Some question may arise or um, may arise in our head. That is why don't we use the OSP uh, or EAGRP on a number or two instead uh, of IBGP. And also, why not we are redistributing uh, this network like 1.1.1.0 slash 23 network to OSP for IBGP and also in here OSPF to BGP. And also the, uh, does need to be uh, directly connected uh, R2 to R4 when we have configured the IBGP. How R2 and R4 are able to reach each other through IBGP. And what about actually the RT? Is there any need to configure the PGP over here? So now uh, this kind of question may arise when you will uh, configuring uh, some scenario, right? So if we explain uh, one by one, like uh, uh, first thing first, uh, like uh, where, is it possible to configure the uh, or transfer the prefixes through the uh, IB, uh, IGP? Technically, it's possible there is no issue is that we can do that if it is uh, like uh, one prefixes or two, uh, two prefix, uh, prefixes that we can do that. But if you think about the internet uh, routes, it's not possible to uh, tra uh, tra uh, transfer all the uh, prefixes uh, through the IGP. And another thing, uh, second question was uh, is, uh, like uh, IBG is IBGP needs to directly connected, so it's not necessary to you know, be directly connected like EBGP. So we can configure the IBGP that is uh, um, uh, it can be a hub or two hub away from the routers. 
So uh, how actually R when we will configure the R2 and R4, then uh, how actually R4 uh, are ever or reachable, uh, can be reachable from R4. That's uh, for that reason, we will need to configure the IGP. So then what uh, first thing first, what uh, what we have, uh, what we can do to configure this network first, we have to configure the IP address of the routers. Then we have to configure the IGP. It can be OSPF, it can be EAJRP or anything. And after that, we will configure the IBGP with our, with our routers and also we'll have to configure the EBGP. So that's the steps we have to follow to configuring or transiting uh, transit it or ISP networks. So another thing uh, may arise when we'll configure the such kind of scenario like uh, we are uh, we are uh, uh, we are as a transit to transfer R1 prefixes to R3, but is it um, when uh, we just configuring the IBGP with R2 to R4, is it required to, to configure the IBGP with R3? So, yes, it's necessary to configure, the answer is uh, it's necessary to configure the IBGP with the R3 because if you uh, if you, you don't configure the IBGP with the R3, then we cannot transfer all the things into R4. So let's jump into lab quickly. Although I don't have much time, so let's configure quickly. So first, I am going to configure the R1. Uh, interface okay i don't know which okay i should this free if i'm wrong interface G I zero by zero is connected to R three, so I have to configure IP address one eighty two one six eight. Then two, no, sorry, that is zero dot one. I am an R one, and IP address is one eighty two one six eight one two dot one fifty five to fifty five to fifty five dot zero, and no and the interface loop back zero ip address is 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 to 55 to 55 to 55 dot zero no shirt i am configuring the bgp at a time router bgp1 neighbor 192.168.12.2 remote s is two and advertising the network 1.1.1.0 into the bgp that's it in our one site so in r2 first thing first we have configured the host name first Host name R2, then interface GI0 by 0 is connected to R1. That is 192.168.12.2 is the local IP. And the subject mask is 255 to 55.0. No shirt. Interface GI0 by 1. IP address 192.168.23.2. 55 to 55.0. No short interface loop back zero. IP address is 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 and subnet mass is 255 to 55.0. No short 
in here if you see we have we have to configure the ebgp with r1 and ibgp we have to configure the ibgp with r3 and r4 because in ibgp uh, i have to you know mesh have to have the adjustment key with all the routers that is uh, we configure the full mesh so why actually that because uh, in ibgp or uh, when it's getting learned any routes or prefixes uh, from another ibgp it will not forward the prefixes to another ibgp that's why you have to configure the IB, ibgp with all our routers so router bgp2 neighbor 192.168.1.1 and the remote is is one and neighbor one neighbor 3.3.3.3 is our for configuring the ibgp i am using the loopback interface ip that is c of router 3 and the remote AC is 2 and we are advertising our loopback interface on bgp that is 2.2.2.2.2.0 okay i'm not advertising our loopback um, into bgp i am configuring the igp ospf one network is 192.168.23.2 quad zero area zero and also look back one two dot two dot two dot two and the quad zero and area zero so i have con what i have configured here show run section router osp first so what uh, i'm con uh, here for the IG uh, igp I, I am configuring the ospf in here and i am configuring the two network one for the loopback another for the point connected to the rt so we will not configure uh, uh we will not the uh, uh, neighbor agency in ospf with the r1 because it's outside right and if we check the bgp configurations show run section router bgp so the as number is two and the neighbor is three loop remote is two and also this one so if we check the show ip bgp summary so it's supposed to be up so if you check show ip interface bit zero y oh, we config that means configuration here so interface zero by zero ip ad, no ip address and zero by and no ip address so it was zero by zero ip will be one ninety two one six eight two three dot two and for zero by one ip address will be one two dot two and submit mask will be this If we ping now, like 192.168.12.1, it's reachable. And now we'll have the neighbor GCC with R1, so IP BGP. Sorry. See, oh, we oh, oh, the neighbor GCC already established with R1, and we didn't configure the RC set there, so it's in idle state. So it's done at R2. Now you'll configure with R3. So, R3. Okay, so interface 
I0 by 0, IP address is 182.168.23.3. Start zero, no shut. Interface G by zero by one, IP address one ninety two one six eight thirty four dot three. Guys, I'm uh, finishing within short time. Just allow me some time. No shut. Router BGP two. The neighbor, we have two neighbors here. One is neighbor 2.2.2.2 and remote AS is two. And the neighbor is three here, 4.4.4.4 and remote AS is two. And interface loopback zero, IP address is 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3 Three two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five dot zero. No shut router OSPF one network is three dot three dot three dot three and zero dot zero dot zero dot zero and area zero and the network is one ninety two one six eight twenty three dot three and port zero area zero. And also the network one eighty two one six eight thirty four dot three and quad zero and area zero. Okay, so if we check show run section router OSPF. Okay. So we just uh, in OSP we are just announcing our loopback interface IP and also the point to point. If we check the BGP configuration show run section router BGP, we are configuring the neighborship with two and four. If we now check the neighborship urgency, it's supposed to be up with the R2 show IP BGP summary but we are not getting, let me ping the 2.2.2.2, .2 .2 .2. it's reachable here. So it needs some time to up the neighborship. Oh, sorry. In R2, I'm just checking whether I'm getting the R3 topic interface. Okay, one thing I just need uh, to configure here, uh, like uh, C, I am uh, getting the ping R3.3.3 uh, uh, .3 and also I'm getting the 2.2.2.2, but it's still the neighborship, not just with the neighbor. What is the reason? The reason behind this is uh, like uh, when uh, the neighbor agency uh, update, is, uh, update package is sending, it's always the connected interface. So uh, we already changed the uh, IP address, like uh, the update uh, update source, like uh, the source IP address for uh, R2 is 2.2 and for the R3 is 3.3, but we didn't configure anything in here. So what we have to do configure here, router BGP2, neighbor 3.3.3, .3 update source, loopback zero. And also in here, router BGP2, router BGP2, neighbor 2.2.2.2, update source, loopback zero. If we check now, show IP PGP summary, now we are getting the neighbor, IP PGP neighborship patterns with R2. So if we now check on the R3, show IP BGP, you will find the one network 1.1.1.0 slash 24 from, that is coming from R1, but that is not, valid and this. 
that, that is the belly but not the best sir uh, sir yes. can you hear me yes so maybe it's 5 almost 5:30 so if we uh, configure all the routers then it will take more much more times uh, so i just going to wrap up for today because it will take more than 15 minutes to configure all the things uh, okay is it okay or i will wrap up here i think you can continue because this is okay. recorded so if you have time you can continue because this is recorded so later the student will uh, uh, see the video and uh, try to learn okay okay sure okay oh, we just configured the r2 r3 and um, r1 r2 and c but now let's configure the r4 so first thing first uh, the host name is r4 so it's connected r4 is connected interface gi0 by 1 IP address is one eighty two one six eight thirty four dot four, and subnet mask is two fifty five dot two fifty five dot zero. No shut. And interface GI zero by zero. That is connected to R five. The IP address is one eighty two one six eight four five dot four. Um, subnet mask is to fifty five to fifty five dot zero. No shirt, and also low back interface zero. IP address is four dot four dot four. Subnet mask to fifty five to fifty five dot zero. No shirt. Do show uh, IP interface prep zero dot zero is connected. To R5 that is 45.4 and 34.4 that is 01 and low back. Let's configure the OSPF router OSPF1 network 4.4.4 wildcard mask squad zero and the area zero and the network that is connected to R3 that is 192.168 34.4. And the quad zero is the wildcard bus, and the area zero. That's it for R four in OSPF, and let's configure the PGP router, BGP two. Neighbor one three dot three dot three dot three, and the remote S is two. Neighbor three dot three. Update source loopback zero. Neighbor two dot two dot two dot two. Update remote S two and two is update source loopback zero. Neighbor one ninety two one six eight forty five dot Five is the or R five IP and the remote AS number is three. That's it. So if we check the adjacency IBGP, show IP BGP summary. We'll have we just adjacency with R three, but not yet up with the R two. Let's check the. R two reachability first, so it's okay with the R two. So show run section router PGP. So neighbor R two updates the slope back zero, and if we check, okay, let's configure R five first, then we'll double show the R two connectivity. So in R five,
first configure the host name r5 configure interface gi0y1 okay 0 by 0 ip address is 192.168.45.5.255.255.255.0 no shut router bgv5 neighbor 192.168.45.4 and the remote as is Oh, sorry. On eighty two on six eight forty five dot four on this two. And if we like, okay. Uh, what I have done or specific. Okay. Uh, four dot four here. Okay, wrong is number two words. Okay, got it. There is something wrong. No. Five. So configure router BGP five neighbor address is one eighty two one six eight four five dot four. Remote is is two. So run section router BGP. Show IP BGP summary. Show. Saying here is wrong is wait R four show runs run section router BGP oh okay yeah. No router BGP as sorry router BGP no router BGP five actually it will be router BGP three and neighbor will be one eighty two one six eight four five dot Four and remote S will be two. So IPBGP summary. Now it's came up. Okay. So uh, if we see now uh, on R four, like uh, we have done our configuration. If we check the neighborship in R4, here I will show IP BGP summary. Like, uh, see, uh, we are not adjacent with the R2, right? But we have adjacent with R3 and R5, but we are not receiving any route here. But if we see the R3 route, like, uh, see, show IP BGP summary. See R1, R2, uh, like uh, R3 has one route, like uh, show IP BGP. 
so he's getting uh, he's has uh, one dot one dot just slash twenty four routing his routing table, but he's not announcing this route to the R four because as I said, we uh, the IBGP the is um, IBGP when he's getting uh, prefixes from IBGP device will not uh, uh, send the route to his another IBGP peers. So the, uh, to avoiding the BGP split horizon uh, road, to avoid the loop in the BGP. So it's the common things. So in so we have then we have to configure the uh, IBGP in full mesh. Like uh, our, we have to configure R2 to R3, R2 to R4, and uh, vice versa R3 to R2 and R3 to R4 and R4 to R3 and R4 to R2. So now. If we check the R2 configuration, like uh, show run section router BGP. So we didn't configure the IBGP with R4, right? That's why uh, the neighbor urgency happened with the R4. So neighbor. That will be the four, and the update source loop back zero, right? Now, if we check right now in R four, show IB BGP summary. See, we are getting the routes from R two. Show IP BGP. Out. But in here, you just uh, need to remember something here like uh, in R2, the, when we are getting with the start, that is the valid. But it's not installing the route into the routing table or tip. Because to uh, announcing this route to the BGP in it pairs is have to valid route. So why it's not valid? That's the main thing, right? So actually, uh, in here, if you see the 1.1.1.0/24, he is getting the routes from 192.168.1.12.1, uh, but he's he has no information to reaching the 12.1, right? So by default, BGP when we are uh, getting the any route in BGP uh, EBG peers it will not change the next hop address. So that's why uh, when we are getting in R4, one route is, uh, is including the next hop address uh, where it came from, right? So to our, um, uh, I mean, to solve this problem, what we can do, we can config, uh, we can advertise this network into our IGP or we can uh, change the next hop. The best practice is to change the next hop so we will do that. Before that, we are uh, just confirming that RO5 not getting any route. So IP BGP summary. So in here you see there is no BGP prefixes. So IP BGP, there is no route. Okay, now let's configure the next hop on R2, like uh, router BGP to neighbor, okay. 4.4.4 next hub self and also neighbor 3.3.3 next hub self. The main question is where we have to configure the next hub self. The uh, IBGP uh, router that is connected to the uh, EGP, EBGP peers will have to configure the next self. In R3, we don't uh, need to configure the uh, R3 because it's uh, don't ha uh, uh, have any BGP pair with the R3, right? So if we configure on the R4, we'll do the same things. Router BGP to neighbor Two dot two dot two dot two and the update source. Sorry, next up still and also with the R three. 
next of set. If we now check the route on IBGP, like the show IP BGP, see this is another sign we are getting here, another flex that is valid. Earlier it was only the best, now it's valid. When it's get valid and best, then it will announce to the EBGB pairs. Now if you check on the R5, we'll get the routes that is from coming from R1. So if you check show IP BGP, so we are getting the one network. So in this way, we have to all configure the IBGP or EBGP. So you have to remember when we are uh, announcing any network in BGP, you have to have on your routing table and also have to have uh, match the uh, uh, prefix length with the or, or routing table. So guys, thanks for today's. Hope you will uh, get some information on BGP. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. I can now answer your question. Uh, okay, just one question uh, from Abdullahad, a previous. Uh, can you check the answer box? A uh, question okay. answer box? Okay, sure. Would you say how to increase the flow of bandwidth in the link and internet packet will go directly outside and land packet to eliminate it? Go. Uh, can you uh, just open the Mr. Ahad the uh, mic, sir? Okay. I think he. Uh... So as um, as I earlier said, for increasing the bandwidth uh, towards the intern uh, uh, ISP, then you have to configure the EBGP multi hub. Like if you configure with the two links, like first one, uh, uh, then the load will be shared with the two links. With in, uh, when you configure the EBGP multi hub, but I didn't get uh, the other question. If you like a uh, what the packet go directly outside land packet only limited with the land no go outside link i didn't understand your question in here can you just uh explain again please abdullah actually uh we could not hear you anything from ahad Uh, your network uh, probably slow. That's why I can, uh, could not hear you. Okay. Or if you have is any there, question, you can ask tomorrow. Is there any other? Is there any other question? Uh, uh, I think uh, no more question. Okay. Okay. I think uh, we can end the session. Thank you, Nozdul, for your nice presentation. And it's uh, about uh, 5.45. So yes. I think we, uh, this, uh, we can end the session. And tomorrow, we'll start our session uh, 3 p.m. Uh, about uh, a network troubleshooting. So if you have any question, you can uh, uh, email us or you can ask tomorrow. So okay, thank you, guys. Thank, thanks, all of you. Uh, Allah Hafiz. OK. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Bye. So now five five forty six. So uh, we will. Uh, stop our accepting the responses about uh, 4, 5, 50. So uh, you must submit within this uh, time frame.
So no. I am just uh, stop the accepting appellation form. So if you have okay, now already five fifty. Thank you, all of you.